are here in the Soil, Water, and Forage Analytical Lab in the basement of Ag Hall, and we're following those soil samples that we took just a couple of weeks ago. And joining us today is Kendall Henderson, who is the Soil Lab Manager. And Kendall, thank you for joining us, and we're excited to kind of see the process that happens with those soil samples. So you guys get a lot in on a daily basis. We do. We get hundreds of samples on a daily basis. And so those are mailed to you typically, I assume, from yes. the extension offices? Yes, exactly. So what happens when they arrive here? So once they arrive here, they come in these UPS boxes usually. And what we do is we take them out of the box and we make sure that they're labeled correctly, that they have the barcode that you placed on them, and that they have a test marked. So once we verify that, we lay them all out on this table and we assign it a lab ID number and then that gets married in our computer system and then from there we put them in the oven overnight and then in the morning they're ground on our soil grinder and then they go into the lab for further processing. Okay, so you really dry them down and then get them into a fine particle yes, so that they can powder. go through all the other aspects. So where does the other stuff mm -hmm. take place? So the other stuff takes place in our main laboratory and I'll take you down there now. Excellent. So this is where all the magic happens, huh? Yes, this is where the magic okay, happens. Okay, so we've got our uh, dried and crushed soil. Mm -hmm. What happens at this point? So at this point, we're get getting ready to do our extractions. Okay. So for phosphorus and potassium, we use our handy two gram scoop to measure out two grams of soil for each sample. Um, so the samples are scooped. Then once we have all our samples scooped, we'll squirt them with extracting solution. They'll go on our shakers for anywhere between five to 30 minutes, depending on the test. And then we'll filter that sample and <clears throat> we'll run that filtrate on our instrument. Okay, and so that'll tell us our phosphorus and potassium mm -hmm. levels. Um, and then, Correct. and each one of these actually has the tag that's still associated with that sample. Yes, exactly. So we still have the tag that came on your sample. It has your customer number and sample number, and then it also has the lab ID number that we assigned it to it. Okay, so we've brought it in a big bag, and now you only use two grams. What happens with the rest of this? So the rest of it is stored. Back behind me, you can see our storage system. We keep it just in case we need to do any reruns or if you want additional tests requested on it or okay. anything like that. We keep it for a few weeks just to make sure that everything's good. All right, so what happens for our nitrogen and pH? So for nitrogen and pH, we use our larger 10 gram scoop. So the samples are also scooped in sequential order. Uh, they're squirted with the extracting solution again, shaken, and then ran on a different instrument. All right, can we go see what happens after this? Yes, let's do that. So what happens in this room? So in here is where we do all of our filtering, and then once we filter, we'll run it on our instrument for P and K analysis. Okay. So the samples are filtered into these cups, and then from there, we'll pour them into these test tubes. So the soil and the extract is filtered out, so we've got that liquid, and that's now gonna go somewhere? Yes, exactly. So once we have that extract, that liquid extract off that soil, we'll put it on to our instruments. And again, the number's still following them the through your system. The number's still following. Yeah. We do everything sequentially, so we know what sample that is. Even though we don't label it, we know exactly where we started, okay. what number we started with, so from there we can follow it. Excellent. So what's this machine yeah. doing? It looks fancy. <laughs> this machine is an ICP, or inductively coupled plasma analyzer. So this is analyzing for phosphorus and potassium by taking some of that liquid up through the probe over the pump, and then it pumps it into here. And this plasma, uh, hence plasma analyzer. Yeah, you can see the blue light in there. Yes, that is actually a plasma. That's where um, the sample gets superheated because it's burning about the temperature of the sun right now. Uh -huh. And it actually makes the electrons on the outer shell jump a layer, and that emits different wavelengths of light depending on the element that we're looking at. Okay. So the light coming off that sample is shown in here. Okay. And then from there, there's little chips that read the different wavelengths of light, and we can tell how much phosphorus and potassium. So that computer is able to detect the smallest changes in that blue light, but obviously we can't see it. It just looks blue to me. Right, obviously. Um, I do have a demonstration that I can show you that it, what it, of what it would look like if we could see it with the okay. naked eye. So are you putting different nutrients on yeah, there? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an element called yttrium in there, okay. and we're going to see what it looks like when we change colors. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so then we've got our NP or excuse me, our, our phosphorus and potassium from this, and that's the end of this process for phosphorus? That is the end of this process. The computer tells us what numbers come off of that extract, and then now we can go and see uh, pH. 
So what's happening here? I'm guessing pH? <laughs> yes, this is pH, exactly right. So this is our pH robot. So we have 10 grams of that soil from right. earlier, and we mix that with 10 milliliters of water. And so we have this slurry mixture. And the pH robot will actually has two probes. It puts those probes directly down into that sample and takes a pH reading. All right, and so we see those probes moving, and so they go and clean themselves in between each sample, I'm assuming? Yes, they do. They get rinsed off between each sample, so there's no cross-contamination between the samples. So obviously when we get a pH, sometimes we get the buffer index too. Can you explain a little bit about what that level of pH that requires a buffer index and yes. where does that come from? So if the pH is below 6.2, the machine will actually add a buffer and then go back and it'll reread the pH after the buffer has been added to give you buffer index. Okay. And that tells you whether or not you need to, you know, uh, how much lime or something you would need to add to your soil to bring it up to a certain pH. Um, the buffer index is only going to be there if the sample's below 6.2. Okay. And so it's going and cleaning itself. Will it go back and go back to that same sample then? And Yes. So once it goes through all the samples, takes the initial pH, it's actually adding buffer as it's going through. And you'll see that those are the two stainless steel probes on the back side. Okay. That's adding the buffer. So it'll go through, it'll read all the pHs, and then it'll go through and it'll pick out those ones that needed buffer index and it'll just go back and read those. So it's doing all of this and figuring this information out, but how does that number actually get to my record that you're going to send to me? Yeah, so I actually have a computer software program that helps me with that. Okay. So this program here has all these little dots and each one of those dots correlates to a sample. So for example, here we have a purple sample, so that means the sample's been read, buffer has been added, and it needs to be re-read again. The green means sample has been read, it doesn't require a buffer, so it doesn't need to be reran again. Okay. And then so it, it's in the process now of going through, and the yellow means that uh, buffer has not been added yet, but it will be okay. on the next run. Excellent. So we've got our phosphorus and our potassium, and now we have our pH and our buffer index. What about the ever important nitrogen? Let's go see how that's done right now. All right. So here's where we have our nitrogen analyzer. Okay. So this is a flow injection analyzer. Similar to the phosphorus and potassium, we have the extract solution okay. um, that we filtered out. So we'll put that into a test tube. This probe here is sucking up some of that sample over a pump, okay. and it's putting it into these tiny little tubes and mixing it with uh, reagents. Then that sample will actually change color, and this machine here with this wavelength reader and light can read the color changes in the sample, and from that we can tell how much nitrogen is in the sample. So it's sort of like the home kits that you buy as far as looking at the color, but this is obviously way more sensitive and it's not just 10 colors to choose from, right? Exactly, yeah. So we have a spectrum anywhere from 0 to 20 ppm, um, and that correlates to 0 to 40 pounds per acre. Okay. Uh, that we can tell the difference. So this is working with that computer next door as far as the data on the nitrogen? Is that Correct, yes. So all this data is being co compiled on this computer. Then we'll put it into an Excel program and upload it onto our database, just like with all the other things that we did today. And then that database will generate the report that you see at the end. Excellent. So, I mean, how many samples do you guys do? I, you get a lot in every day. and this. Is, it's constantly going, it seems yes, like. Yes, it seems like it's constantly going. Uh, we do an average about 200, 100 to 200 samples a day. That's just soil. But we do 60,000 samples a year, and about 30,000 of those are soil. Oh, my goodness. So, so I know you run a lot of other tests. What are some of those tests that you do? We do a greenhouse media test, and we can tell you what nutrients are in that greenhouse media. And that's been really important here lately, especially for, like, cannabis growing and stuff like that. And a lot of homeowners do that as well. Okay, so that's important to know. Don't run that through as a routine right, soil exactly. sample. exactly. Especially because we use that scoop instead of weighing out each sample, and a media does not weigh as much as a soil. So it's really important to run that as a greenhouse media test and not a soil. And that's the important thing is uh, these machines are calibrated for a certain amount of soil and things like that, and that's why we talk 
about getting six inches of that soil profile for a routine sample and because yes. it's all it all goes into the accuracy of the information. It does exactly. You saw that that was two grams of soil gets all your phosphorus and potassium for that one sample. So it's really important to get a good representation. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Kendall, for walking us through this. You're and welcome. and so after all of this process, um, of course, we didn't sit and wait for it to dry. We kind of fast forwarded this process, but it usually takes about seven to ten days for our report to go back to our extension office. So once we receive the sample, results are actually done within two business days. And okay. That, that extension office can print off the report as soon as we upload. It onto okay. our website. So it's just a matter of getting the sample here. Yes, sometimes. that's the longest process usually is the mail. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been very informative. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.